Peppa Pig. Good night, Peppa. Once upon a time, Granny and Grandpa Pig came round for dinner. It was almost time for Peppa and George to go to bed. Yawn, yawned Daddy Pig, very loudly, while they were eating. Hee hee, everyone giggled. Oh, sorry, snorted Daddy Pig. I'm a little tired. Peppa and George weren't tired at all. Can we jump in puddles for just a tiny bit? asked Peppa. Please. Okay, said Daddy Pig, but you must come in at bath time. Peppa and George loved jumping in muddy puddles. They jumped up and down until they were covered in mud. Peppa, George, called Daddy Pig. You must be feeling sleepy after all that jumping. Let's get you in the bath. But Daddy, we're not even a little bit sleepy, replied Peppa. Peppa and George splashed in the bath until they're both nice and clean. Splash, splash, splash. I think bath time is over, said Daddy Pig, dripping wet. You must be tired after all that splashing. We're not even a little bit tired, cried Peppa, splashing Daddy Pig again. Snort, snort, laughed George. Daddy Pig was soaked. Peppa and George hopped out of the bath. They dried off and put their pajamas on very slowly. Then they brushed their teeth for an extra long time. Brush, brush, brush. Quick, wash your faces. Granny Pig wants to tuck you into bed, said Mummy Pig. Hippie, cheered Peppa. Gangy ig, cheered George. Peppa and George were finally ready for bed. They said goodnight to Mummy and Daddy Pig and found Granny Pig in their room. Come on, little ones, said Granny Pig. It's bedtime. Hop in. I can't go to bed without Teddy, said Peppa. Dinosaur, sobbed George. So Granny Pig found Teddy and Mr. Dinosaur and tucked everyone in. Good night, Peppa and Teddy, said Granny Pig. Good night, George and Mr. Dinosaur. But we are not even the tiniest bit sleepy, Granny, said Peppa. I see, said Granny Pig. I wonder what will make you sleepy. Can you tell us a bedtime story? asked Peppa. Of course, Peppa, replied Granny Pig as long as you promise to go to sleep as soon as the story ends. We promise, cried Peppa. Peppa and George loved bedtime stories. Granny Pig began telling a story. Once upon a time, there was a beautiful princess called Peppa, interrupted Peppa. Yes, said Granny Pig. And Sir George the Brave Knight, Peppa interrupted again. He <laughs> giggled George. Granny Pig carried on. Princess Peppa and Sir George lived in a castle. A great big castle in the sky, said Peppa. Granny Pig tried to finish the story. Princess Peppa and Sir George had been playing all day in the castle and were very tired. Then the king arrived, cheered Peppa, and a cook, and a wizard, and a scary dragon dinosaur. Dinosaur, added George. Grrr. And the cook made them all a giant picnic with sandwiches, cakes, jelly. Peppa listed all the foods she could think of. Grandpa Pig came to find Granny Pig. I'm telling Peppa and George a bedtime story, explained Granny Pig, and we promise to go to sleep when the story ends, added Peppa. I see, said Grandpa Pig. Granny Pig, why don't you leave this to me? I'm good at ending stories. So Granny Pig said goodnight and went downstairs. Grandpa Pig did his best to end the story. After they ate the lovely picnic, everyone fell asleep. The end. But Peppa did not want the story to end. Then, they all woke up and their friends arrived, she cried, and they went for a ride in Princess Peppa's carriage and decided to have a great big party. Soon, Daddy Pig came upstairs. I'm the expert at telling bedtime stories, he said. Then he whispered quietly to Grandpa Pig. I'll have them asleep in no time. So Grandpa Pig said goodnight and went downstairs. Princess Peppa and Sir George were just about to have a great big party, Peppa told Daddy Pig. I see, he replied. Thud, thud, thud. Mummy Pig heard banging, so she came upstairs too. Peppa, George, and Daddy Pig were dancing. We're having a party like in the story, explained Peppa. They're almost asleep, said Daddy Pig. Thank you, Daddy, said Mummy Pig. I'll take over now. So Daddy Pig said goodnight and went downstairs. Mummy Pig tucked Peppa and George back into bed. Then she asked Peppa to tell her the whole bedtime story from the beginning, very quietly. Once upon a time, whispered Peppa, yawning, there was a beautiful princess called Peppa. She lived with Sir George, the brave knight, in a great big castle in the yawn sky. 
Speaking softly was making Peppa really sleepy. Peppa tried to finish the story, but she just couldn't keep her eyes open. Soon, George fell fast asleep, and so did Peppa. Mummy Pig looked at her two little ones, smiled, and whispered, "Good night, George. Good night, Peppa." Then she headed downstairs to find Granny, Grandpa, and Daddy Pig. They were all fast asleep. It was bedtime for Peppa and George, and it was bedtime for everyone else too. Good night," said Mummy Pig. Well, thanks for reading. Hope you liked the story. Please subscribe. Don't miss our next story. Peppa goes around the world. Good night. Peppa Pig. Peppa goes around the world. It was almost the start of the summer holidays. Peppa was playing in the garden with her friends. What are you doing over the holidays? Asked Wendy Wolf. I'm going to the park. Replied Peppa. Peppa was very excited. She was going to spend the holidays jumping in lots of muddy puddles. Peppa's friends were going on holiday all around the world. I'm going to the jungle," said Pedro Pony. "We're going to the desert," said Emily and Edmund Elephant. "And I'm going to the mountains," barked Danny Dog. "What about you, Susie?" Asked Peppa, "I'm off to the South Pole to play with the penguins." Susie Sheep grinned. On the first day of the holidays, Peppa and George climbed into the car. "Time to go to the park," said Mummy Pig. "Let's go," cheered Daddy Pig. The little car bounced along the road. The engine went chugga chugga chugga, bang, clang, bonk. Oh dear," groaned Daddy Pig. "The car has broken down." Mummy Pig called for help. "Please come quick," she said. "This is an emergency." "Look," gasped Peppa. "Here comes Miss Rabbit's emergency breakdown service." "That was quick," said Mummy Pig. Miss Rabbit said it would take her all day to put things right. "But we want to go to the park," cried Peppa. Don't worry," replied Miss Rabbit. "While I fix your car, you can borrow my airplane." "Airplane!" George shouted. Everybody climbed into Miss Rabbit's airplane. Mummy Pig took the controls. "This is fun," she said. "Are we supposed to be flying upside down?" wondered Daddy Pig. "The ground is in the sky, and the sky is on the ground," giggled Peppa. Meow. It didn't take long for Mummy Pig to get the hang of airplane flying. Next stop, the park," said Daddy Pig. "To jump in muddy puddles," cried Peppa. Daddy Pig opened out his map. "Are we lost as usual?" asked Peppa. "We are not lost," snorted Daddy Pig. "I can see some trees. That must be the park." Where are the swings and roundabouts? Asked Peppa. Hmm," said Daddy Pig. "This looks more like a jungle than a park." Peppa gasped. Pedro was on holiday in the jungle. Mummy Pig pulled the handbrake, and the plane fell through the trees, landing on the ground with a bump. Here was Pedro. "Hello, Pedro," called Peppa. "Are you having a nice holiday?" Pedro nodded. It's brilliant. There are parrots, monkeys, and everything. The jungle was fun, but there were no muddy puddles to jump in. Can we visit my other friends on their holidays around the world? Asked Peppa. I don't see why not," said Mummy Pig. Shoom! It was Daddy Pig's turn to fly the airplane. Where next? He said. The mountains," said Peppa. "That's where Danny Dog is." Whirr! Danny Dog was enjoying his mountain holiday. The best bit about climbing a mountain is that you're all alone," explained Captain Dog. "There's no one else around." Daddy Pig landed the airplane at the top of the mountain, right in front of Danny and Captain Dog. "Hello, Daddy!" shouted Peppa. "We're flying around the world to see my friends. 
This mountain is very high. Peppa and her family said goodbye to Danny and Captain Dog and flew away again. Soon, Daddy Pig spotted lots of yellow sand in the distance. It must be the desert, he said. That's where Emily and Edmund are on holiday, cried Peppa. It wasn't easy to land an airplane in the desert. We've sunk into the ground, said Mummy Pig. Why do they have to fill the desert with so much sand? cried Daddy Pig. Hello, Emily, shouted Peppa. Hello, Edmund. We've been studying a rare lizard, whispered Edmund. It must be shy because it's run away. It had a scaly back and a long red tongue, added Emily. Yuck, said Mummy Pig. Lucky it ran off then. The lizard suddenly appeared on a rock. There it is, shouted Daddy Pig, frightening it away again. Did you say you had other people to visit? sighed Dr. Elephant. Yes, said Peppa. We've still got to go and see Susie at the South Pole. Goodbye, everybody. Susie was having a great holiday, but she did miss Peppa. I wish Peppa was here, sighed Susie. Skid! Screech! Peppa's airplane landed on the snow and ice. Peppa! cried Susie. Susie! cried Peppa. Peppa and Susie were best friends. They were very pleased to see each other again. Peppa had lots of fun with Susie and the penguins, but they couldn't play all day. Peppa still had to go to the park. Miss Rabbit should have fixed our car by now, said Mummy Pig. The airplane flew all the way back around the world. Whoosh! Hello, Miss Rabbit, said Peppa. We've flown all around the world. Good thing I remembered to fill the airplane's tank up with petrol this morning, said Miss Rabbit. Your little car is working again, said Miss Rabbit. Peppa and George climbed inside. Flying around the world was nice, decided Peppa, but something was missing. A muddy puddle. Eek, <laughs> snark, snark, splosh, squelch. Peppa and George loved jumping up and down in muddy puddles. Everyone loves jumping up and down in muddy puddles. Well, thanks for reading. Please subscribe. Don't miss our next story, Peppa's Pumpkin Party. Bye.